So one of the, yeah. So the power of, uh, one of the powers of emotionally strong people is they have the, they use power of heart more than power of uh, um, head, so-called, right? And where do we get the power? So generally, if we are not coming from a power of heart, as a humans, we start criticizing, right? We start saying that we will be more critical, like because of this, it is like that, you should be doing that, you should not be doing that. And then uh, we will be judging more, right? And when an emotion, what it does is we lose contact with our own heart. So what it means is you will be working on a very superficial level and you will be draining a lot more energy than it is needed. So whereas, because in a way, when we are start criticizing, what it does is we start postponing the real problem. The real problem is misunderstanding real problem, real situation, maybe asking for us to listen, asking for us to connect, asking for us to be a little more tolerant, asking for us to be, to understand the other person. But when we don't listen through, what will happen is we will start acting on whatever is visible, whatever is immediate, uh, immediate um, information that we get from the situation in order to to handle it and then to move move on move forward so whereas emotionally healthy people come from a little deeper place so they come from a place of experience right when we say experience what experience are we talking about especially when it takes a little more power to be more compassionate, to be more um, loving. It needs more power than just acting on the instincts, right? So when I say people of emotionally healthy people come from a place of heart, place of experience, so they clearly know their own stage. In other words, first they check in with themselves. Am I in touch in, in that pure place? So the minute you are in touch with that pure place, you have this, um, you, you step into that uninfluenced stage. It means when somebody is doing something, most of the time, how do we relate to the situation is we put ourselves in that shoes and we start ex creating that experiences. And then based on whatever we feel, we start responding to that situation from that feeling. Or it is the same situation. If when I'm, when I'm observing some person, for internally what is happening is I vi visualize myself being a victim of what that person is saying. And based on that, I try to emerge what happened in my past, how did it feel? And based on that, I act or react on that. So, so that is the autopilot mode. That is a default mode in which we humans work. So emotionally healthy people are mindful of that thing. So first they see when they hear and listen, when they connect to the situation or a person, first thing, they collect the information and at the same time, they are mindful of their feelings. How, what is the situation making me feel? So immediately, if there is some reaction that is provoc provocating, first thing is they try to tame that part within themselves. And then they consciously shift into that part, what we call a part of heart. Heart meaning a part of loving space. So once they experience that loving presence, whatever they are feeling, bad, 
shifts the way they are engaging with the situation the way they witness the situation changes so every time you feel it so your attention goes beyond what other person is saying what actually is happening in on the surface of it you go beyond and then start observing the stage of the other person when i say when i use the word stage you start observing what is that other person feeling is the other person hurt and what is making them hurt and you start observing the need of that other person so and that is where when we use angels i mean if you start seeing the people who are emotionally powerful those are angels angels empathize when we use the word angels empathize you start feeling what other person is feeling right and at the same time you are not influenced their feel influenced by their emotions and then you are not sucked into their emotions instead you hold you have this power of love which you hold and then you ex express that loving energy to that other person you bring that loving energy in the context of this interaction and what you feel for them they can feel that when the other person starts feeling that you start transforming the way other persons responds responds to that situation so that itself helps the other person lift up from that intensity of the situation the intensity of the situation is based is directly related to how strong the other person is feeling if the if if the other person is deeply hurt their response will be very forceful right so when you are empathizing when the other person is in a deep pain so when you empathize with that person and then you express that loving feeling towards the other person other person feels at ease feels comfortable then there will be a, a sense of cooperation right so every time you come from this place it needs a lot of strength and this is where will power comes into picture because spiritual spirituality help us to go a little deeper with the with the sense of understanding we can bring a sense of clarity to our mind right but feelings don't always comply with your understanding right how often have we found ourselves guilty of knowing what needs to be done but we still didn't have strength to follow through that needs power that needs strength that needs will power to stick to that pure feeling right so actions is one to one ex, uh, is at one level but feelings feeling having a good and pure feeling for the other person in in the in 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 the conversation needs a lot more power will power than just acting right feeling right it takes lot more strength right and that is where emotionally powerful people use their will power at a deeper level and exercise the sense of empathizing means you get to feel what other person feeling and then you use this power to transform the other person so and then the next point goes one level deeper in other words when we are engaging in this world is settings it is easy for us because we have a feedback coming from it and we have our conscious mind which is watchful which is helping us to guide us our actions our thoughts or feelings but when you take it to a deeper level and that is our dreams in our dreams what is happening is our conscious mind is not awake 
so when we are in our deepest dreams what is at work is our emotions are working in handling our own emotions right so if i when we practice this meditation we want to take it to the grain of the soul what we call so we want to transform when we start feeling this pure experience of i am this being of peace it is not just a thought it is not just a conscious thought i'm just holding and creating that awareness now by creating some visualizations but instead you go a little deeper you start feeling peace and you're not just feeling peace you are absorbed in peace and then you start embodying peace means i'm not just peaceful i am a being of peace once we start exercising that uh, presence of peace that starts going deeper than your conscious mind and this is one of the powerful tool that emotionally strong people exercise they take this experience of peace much more deeper than your conscious mind even in your unconscious presence you start embodying that sense of love and compassion right and this is how as we start taking deeper and deeper you feel that at the core of your heart you are very pure very powerful and that is the power when when you are not defeated even in your dreams you will not be defeated in practical life when we say defeated we will not get succumbed by the situations of the world because the power of heart is much more powerful than the situations that is happening right there is a saying power of love can move the mountains right so when we are using the mountain of the situations is what is actually getting moved right so feel free to pause me at any time if you have any thoughts questions concerns yeah so so we'll go to the next slide so the next one is humans judge angels discern on the same flow of thought as you are absorbed in this stage we are not saying that everyone is an angel around us we do acknowledge that there is a human shortcomings we do acknowledge that some people because of their own weakness including ourselves in our own weakness we might have done something wrong so but how do we handle that situation is what is how do they approach is what here we are trying to address so by default we humans starts judging and angel start discerning what is what does it mean when we discern the ability to in order to discern i need to detach myself from in other words if i am absorbed i'm invested in the outcome of a situation i'm invested in my um in my own agendas if i'm invested in a certain outcome i cannot see other person's perspective i cannot see the reality i cannot i will be covered by the fog right and these are these four steps that are being used by um the dadis which uh, we call in brahma kumaris they use this approach we have witnessed them using this approach in handling the administrative challenges or 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 organizational challenges or in, in in other words we don't use this word organization we use the word called a family this is a one big family 
right? There will be differences in the family. That is the first approach, that first mindset that we start using, right? So now coming back to how do I handle this, right? So I'm not saying that we are all in this angelic stage, but we are all in this human stage. From human, how can I move towards? What is it that I can do so that I can move from this place of judgmental <coughs> stage to moving to this stage of ability to not get influenced and and move towards a place of love, right? So the first step of detaching is first thing is I need to, by default, we are absorbed in our own in, in personal in, intentions or agendas. And that is what in Brahma Kumaris, we use this word called body consciousness. Body consciousness doesn't just mean like physical conscious, con it doesn't just mean that I'm conscious of my physical self, but I am conscious of these emotions which are triggered by this physical action and interactions, right? So by physical emotions that I have created, right? A sense of fear creates a sense of anger, a sense of loss, a sense of attachment. I am I have a sense of liking for something and I have a feeling for that thing and that has already biased my intellect, my sense of uh, uh, deciding what is right, what is wrong, right? So that very sense of attachment, very sense of uh, um, limited experience, very sense of being under the influence of limited experiences and dependencies. And there is a lot of unconscious bias which has been built within our consciousness. And that unconscious bias is very deeply ingrained in our color of the skin, in the culture where we grew up, in the, in, in the gender, um, in the age, and we have created a lot of preset, predefined uh, notions about different things. And then, and then as we are going through this journey, we have created a sense of liking for something and not a sense of disliking even for some things. Because we have created, we might have a different experiences as we are going through. So all of this human journey created this human experience all of these human experiences, the experiences that are coming from a limited sense of self by physical interactions and engagement has created a whole limited sense of, sense, limited sense of self that influences our sense of judgment, our sense of understanding what is right, what is wrong. And before that, we'll start questioning we don't even start questioning that, am I thinking right? So that state is what we call absorbed state. We are so absorbed in our own inner world. We are so absorbed in our own little world. And from that cocoon is where we are looking the whole world outside. And then we are relating to whole world from this human experiences that we had, right? So the first step that is done in meditation is start observing. The minute I start observing my own thoughts, my own emotions, and then start putting a label, I start understanding where I am, where, what stage I am in, from what stage I am coming from. So the whole practice of meditation helps us to detach ourselves from our own emotional biased or limited sense of self. The minute I step back by observing, I start stepping away from what that I am absorbed in. If I'm absorbed in this consciousness of human emotions, I cannot separate myself. I start identifying myself with this human experiences. And then I start limiting my sense of self 
with this only this human emotions. So the very practice of observing helps me to separate myself from what I'm absorbed in. So I'm absorbed in this consciousness, absorbed in this limited consciousness based on my human experiences and human emotions. And I start identifying with that. The minute I start observing what is that emotion, I slowly start feeling a sense of separation from that limited sense of self. The minute I start detaching myself from my limited sense of self, I raise my awareness. And this is a very powerful point which starts bringing a clarity of what is that I'm feeling, what is that other person is feeling. I start become non-judgmental. I can only become non-judgmental about other person only when I step away from my own human emotions. As long as I'm absorbed in my own human emotions, one of the anger, irritation, or upset, or, or my own liking or disliking for a person will bias the way I am, I am relating to that other person or the situation. And that is where the, the tool to, as you step back, you get to step to this place where you can clearly discern, this is an emotion that I am feeling. And from this state, I, I, when I step back from my own stage, I can observe where the other person is absorbed in. In other words, I can see where the other person is coming from. So I can see other person's emotions. So the, then I can address that, hey, this person is hurt and I start engaging to address that part which is actually hurt on the other person. So I won't be judgmental, but instead, like in the previous slide, I will, I will be compassionate. I, I, I can empathize with that other person, but at the same time, what is the next thing that has to be done, right? So the very situation has been created because we are in a, something has to change. So the what is it that has to be changed, you'll get a high degree of clarity. And what is it I have to change? What is it I have to help other person change? And that is when, when we always refer to angels, angels always uplift the spirit of the other person. They don't leave the other person hurt, wounded where they are. No, whenever you are touched by an angel, you are always uplifted in your spirit, right? So every time I exercise this quality of being detached, naturally you will be loving. And from that loving state, there are these four things uh, that comes into picture. And this is one of, these are the qualities that we generally see in one of our uh, dadis, Dadi Prakashmani, and she is, that is where we, we see this quality of nimit, nirman, nirmal swabhav, and nirman. Nimit, she always has this attitude of like, see, I am put into this situation and I am an instrument, means I am a trustee, right? And this is the whole universe or the divine has put me in this situation to take care of this particular situation, right? So I am just an instrument, nothing personal. I am using, so there is also this saying in Christianity also, God willing. I mean, even in, in Quran, there is the saying that God willing, right? If I'm here to exercise the will of the God, right? And angels are the representatives of God. Angels fulfill the will of the God. Angels never interfere with their own ideas and, and analogies. They are very much aligned with the universal um, agenda, 
the agenda of the universe is love agenda of the universe is not to hurt and if you actually see the agenda of even karma is also love if somebody is going in a wrong direction karma always helps to nudge and create a blocker if you are going in a wrong, wrong direction it, it is just a blockers to direct you in a right direction it is all a will of love right so when you become this instrument conscious what happens is your heart you, you are very humble humble because uh, if i am not humble my ego will kick in and and then I'll, I'll share one thing if even though i detach myself even though i step into my a space of loving and come love and compassion and from that space if i uplift other person that itself is an act of kindness and if you identify yourself with that act of kindness there is this whole sense of self that is kicking in saying that i uplifted you in other words i am at a higher place than you and that is a stage of ego the minute the ego kicks in the divine power vanishes and that is why humility is a really powerful tool in especially to discern right so if i should not interfere with the my own sense of self even my own sense of goodness even my own sense of goodness should not interfere with my act of goodness so when that thing happens and that is humility you are doing what is the right thing to be done and you don't need to take any credit you don't need to get any recognition when i come from that mindset i really experience the real sense of love right and humble humility is a very really big part of it and that comes from the third part which is called nirmal swabhav nirmal means very pure very sacred swabhav means swa means self bhav means bhavna the feelings right the wave of feelings is not tampered it's very pure wave of feelings and you'll see that in an angel i mean that's how we describe an angel angel has are very light that they don't have any ego they don't have any agenda all they are there is to uplift you once they have done the task they are gone right they have this nirmal swabhav and they are always uplifting nirman means constructive nimit nirmal nirman nirmal swabhav and nirman so so when you keep this as your as your guidance when you are handling yourself you can see that the greatness starts coming up mahin and mahan means it is very subtle but it is very elevated your stage starts getting elevated and every time you exercise this approach and you you can start exercising this process this this mindset every time you engage with this world and especially when you are engaging with your own self and there's one of the slides which talks about that right so one of the powerful tools of emotionally strong healthy people is detached and loving and you are detached from your own agendas you start feeling something higher every time you start feeling from that feeling you are stronger and at the same time every time you help somebody else uplift their spirit your power of exercising that power of love gets more stronger and this habit more i start doing this more i start having this uh more i start having these experiences coming from a very pure and right place i start creating a habit of it and then it becomes very 
unconscious and then it is very and it becomes very natural yeah so not judging but discerning discerning at a very subtle level mahin that brings mahan right and then how do we do that detach and loving detach from your own limited emotional self and then as we start doing this your own limited self starts dissolving yeah so let's go to the next slide and now is there is this attitude of love inspire they have this whole approach of inspiring others not correcting right so when what's wrong with correcting we always uh, hear people correcting so the whole agenda of inspiring comes from a different place correction comes from a different place when we say correction we first bring their attention to what is wrong the minute you bring their attention to what is wrong now you are going to say that this is wrong now you have to fix this and you have to do this you have to do that you have to do that right so what is wrong with that what is wrong with that approach any one any thoughts comments what is wrong with correcting feel free to unmute yourself it would be ego because how do you know the correction is there's so many possibilities it's it would be coming from ego that is true and uh, and what else any other thoughts if you start thinking a little deeply I, from the i think the problem with judgment is i want to accept you but in judging you that judgment the first person that judgment passes through is me so that judgment is in my heart and i attribute it to what you've done that is one thing yeah so just imagine i am a tough mother i'm not judging you i want to be better but i'm saying that do this do that do that you have to get good grades you have to be a olympic swimmer you have to be get into harvard you should be a good musician and you should be very popular in the world and all the things what is wrong with that correcting people so here are some of the thoughts right anyone so jayshree you are muted so you have to unmute to speak okay so as as long as you try to achieve your goal without harming or hurting anybody else uh then it would be okay but if you feel that whoever comes in the middle of your you know trying to achieve and that makes you angry or upset or jealous or something like that then that won't be appropriate hmm. that is true so if you actually see now we are talking about attitude right so attitude uh, the word that is used is vritti what is attitude attitude is not same as thinking right so thinking is generally sequential right you do this if this thing is happening so then you use your intellect you use your logic and then you say if this then that do this if not this then that but whereas attitude is what is driving your thinking what is what makes you think the way you think is what we call attitude right so when we say attitude of love if i put myself in that place of attitude of love so the whole approach is totally different from correcting 
if you there are certain subtle nuances where you say that see you should do this you should do that if you do this and that then you'll be that right so from and then how is it different from inspiring so inspiration won't tell you should do this that and the other inspiration will will be more like you guide them to find their own solution most of the time inspiration comes from that place you are inspiring them you're not telling do this or do that you're not guide uh, you're not telling instead you're inspiring them to do the right thing so in other words if you want to give give anyone correction first you have to give them love if you don't give them love they won't be in a place to listen to what you're trying to say even if you force them to hear they will hear and then you can force them to repeat what i said just so that they get it you can force them to repeat what you said they can repeat word to word but still they won't get it because that is temporary and even you can force them to do whatever three steps that you ask them to do by correcting do this that and the other and then they do it right but there won't be any transformation inspiration is that is you just create that atmosphere you create that healthy atmosphere where they they let their guards down in other words they are not defensive first of all right by creating this loving atmosphere and caring atmosphere you allow the person to let their guards down right so that is first thing guards down between you and that person who is interacting and then now if when you are inspiring somebody else you are allowing them to let their guard down for themselves because there are two parts within ourselves there is a part which is under the influence of this limited emotions experiences desires and stuff like that and then there is another part which is much more capable of much more worthy much more powerful so actually what you are asking for that person is like you are asking that person to step up raise to the next level so only way is they have to figure out their own weakness and when they can see their own weakness they know how to correct their own weakness inspiration has that quality of helping other person creating that loving atmosphere where they can let their guards down and then also guiding them to see their own weakness it is not telling their weakness but it is guiding them to see their own shortcoming and before you point their attention to their own shortcoming you always point them to their strength you always point them to their strength that strength that will help you to overcome your weakness right so if you actually see there are three steps in this in this process right so first step is you creating this loving atmosphere with attitude creates the atmosphere vritti se vatavaran when you create this attitude of love it creates this very healthy atmosphere and with that atmosphere there is a subtle transformation in the dynamics between the people dynamics between you and the situation so the whole situation the energy between people starts transforming and with that so then there is a communication which starts flowing so then you bring the attention of the other person right and then you make them comfortable so they are very pleasant and then they can clearly hear and see what you are trying to say and now the next thing is you start bringing their attention to what is their strength what is their goodness what is their strength and then as you bring them to their own goodness what is actually happening in the inner stage of the other person is you are taking them away from their own weakness you are already putting them in a place of power 
and from that place you bring their attention back to let them see their own thing and they know what to do from there and that is how inspiration works correction straight away goes and attacks saying that look you did wrong you should do this you should not do that right so again i want to bring your attention to this word it is not just power of love it is an attitude of love right so attitude of love is different from power of love when you are coming from this attitude of love there is this attitude of sneha sahyog and seva so these three words are powerful sneha is coming from a place of love sahyog is you are giving your yogdan means yog means like you are uh, connecting and you are uplifting yogdan right sahyog right when you are giving the cooperation you are not just giving the cooperation at the physical level or giving just an advice you are giving a cooperation at a deeper level when you start uplifting the spirit of the other person or you are empowering the other person there is one more happy person in the world so that is real seva it is not just one happy person you coming from a place of pure heart but you are also bringing other people to the next level and that is seva that brings real transformation right conscious of what is guiding their thoughts words deeds sambandh sampark your relations and also connections right and that is where if you want to shift from human to that angel angels are the ones who are who have the habit of emotionally strong personality right to i have to keep an eye on my own thoughts words actions sambandh sampark in my relations and connections am i coming from this attitude of sneha sahyog and seva yeah any thoughts comments okay so the next one this is a little deeper yeah so this is a their stage right so especially it is coming to a place on when we are reflecting on our own self what is the approach of an angel what is an approach of a human humans always ask humans always ask like somebody else help me out somebody out there help me out there is always asking and calling and begging and you you come from that place where you you are in a place of being stuck right so whereas angels come from a little different place so the place of what we call stiti is created by smriti smriti se stiti smriti se samarthi means smriti meaning awareness when i have this alokik smriti in other words when you are in contact with your higher nature with your uninfluenced nature uninfluenced by the drama of the world when you come from that place of uninfluenced stage what happens is you coming from a place of your your stage is very stable right so with alaukik smriti you build the stiti full of conviction of conviction and faith those who are full in all aspects will not fail full meaning those who are very content and how can i be content when i'm more detached again connected to the previous slide when i'm detached and when i'm going in that loving stage where i'm very full and content not dependent on anything physical my and then how do i get to that stage and that that is where smriti comes into picture when you activate your awareness that who am i 
and I am this being of peace. I am born peaceful and everything else is, is a game of life and I don't have to identify myself with this human emotions. So when I separate myself, when I step into this stage, in other words, step into this awareness that is what self-awareness practice is all about. When I step into this smriti that I am a peaceful being and I am a non-physical being. I am not this physical being. I am this conscious being. I am the spiritual being having this human experience. I am the spiritual being going through this. I am a traveler through this space and time. I am this spiritual being connecting and relating to all other spiritual beings. I'm not con just connecting to some person and behind that person, there is also a conscious being that conscious being also have their own thoughts. They have their own feelings. They have their own emotions. They have their own experiences. And that being who's having these thoughts, feelings, experiences, emotions is not a thing. It's not a thing. And when I have this awareness, when I activate this awareness, they are also going through this human experiences. They are also in this, in this journey of wear and tear, wear and tear of their own emotions, I will be more mindful of how am I connecting, right? So I just want to give you one context here that the whole attitude of the present world is more of we start loving things, things that give us physical experiences, physical comforts, physical joy, physical experiences. We love those things. And in the process, we start using people, people who has feelings, people who have emotions, people who can, who can connect and relate. We start using people to get to the things that we love. And that is the attitude of being coming from a place of human. When we always go and then start praying, we start saying that God, give me this thing, give me that thing. Help me with this family member, help me with this help, help me with this, that and the other. And all of these things are limited. And all of these things are going to be moving away. So that whole attitude what is the priority here is that human experience becomes higher priority than this non-physical being, right? We start using beings, people, in the name of getting to the things that we love. And why are we so addicted to that? Because we start getting liking it, getting attracted to it, start dependent on our sense of love and happiness, and that becomes um, a bait. It's not just a bait. It, it becomes a force that is coming from inside and that makes us flawed. Follow it. So the whole practice of meditation is recognizing that there are two components. There is this physical experiences and there is this non-physical presence that gives you whole new experience, a spiritual experience, right? And that is what we call a low kick Smriti makes you a low kick, brings you a low kick presence, right? So more you start staying, coming from this, more you start sitting in the Smriti awareness, more you are aware that you are the spiritual being. Your stiti starts transforming. Your stage will start transforming, right? From your Smriti and stiti comes your Vritti. If you look at the previous slide, vritti, ved, what creates that vritti? This creates your stiti creates the vritti. And stiti is based on your smriti. Your awareness leads to your stage. And your stage, if you are very stable in your spiritual presence, your expression of love, your attitude of love is natural. Right? And that is where is the second part which is talking about. And then you have this, because you're coming, Smriti activates that energy within you. 
smriti that awareness activates your spiritual powers when the power is activated you have full conviction in the, within yourself you trust because you recognize that other person is also a soul other person is also a, a spiritual being when you come from that space you know you recognize other person as a spiritual being so you know there is this spiritual power within that person so and that is that sthiti is what leads to this attitude of love and that is where when you are engaging with that person you are inspiring that to activate and encourage that spiritual power in that other person and then as you start going you start this helps you to see this helps you to be a humble instrument to inspire others follow right so as we start going further we don't wait for the things to happen we start creating the world of newness right there is this whole attitude of courage you this emotionally strong people come from this place of power and that power will start working only when you take a first step of courage you have to take a courage to go against the the flow of the world the flow of the world would be saying that you have to um fight for your rights and stuff like that but when you come from a place of heart you start transforming your relationships and there is this whole new surge of experience that comes with it and the courage comes and the second part is more about observe one's own sanskaras as a detached observer and have a courage to transform in other words we have ourselves have gone through this lot of uh, shortcomings we might have done lot of mean things we might have done uh, in our limited awareness we have hurt at somebody else uh, we might have hurt, we 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 took lot of hurt in this journey right and all of that thing has built up so it needs courage to observe my own weakness and still be compassionate towards myself and use all of the above powers to transform my own um sanskara sanskara is nothing but a source of pain a source of hurt source of uh, um trauma and phobias are all coming from that place right so ability to detach and observe my own pain that needs a lot of courage and that when i start observing that brings newness in my own life right and that is the power that courage is there in those emotionally strong people so so just want to be mindful of the time uh anyone has any thoughts questions comments there are few of this let me just quickly run through angels heals humans diagnose they they just diagnose like they say like if this then that they will be using more of head angels use more of heart they have this constant uh, equanimity their own brightness does not lessen when they see the cloud of circumstances so in other words as a humans we always put ourselves in the shoes of others and then we ourselves get clouded right so so this is the power of a healer they always stay above and then lift others into that place of healing right human separate angels embrace angels bring peoples together angels bring souls together angel brings hearts together humans separate why do they separate the everyone is looking for the right thing but in a wrong places 
In other words, everyone is looking for love. Everyone is looking for happiness, but they're looking for all of this love, happiness, joy in physical world. So when you're looking for joy in physical world, there is only limited resources. So you start grabbing somebody else's share and in the name of comforts, in the name of joy. And then we start abusing the nature, you start abusing the climate, right? And that is where we are. And in the process, so now you start separating, you deserve, you don't deserve, right? Whereas the angels come from a different place. They come from a spiritual space where there is abundance. So they embrace even the weaker because they know in the depth of the core, the intention of every person is right. Intention of every person is love. Intention of every person is peace and joy deep down in the core. But where they are looking is in a wrong place. So they start, they, they won't reject people, they embrace and then they act. They don't separate. Say, if you look at the whole, um, whole prison system, how it works. The whole prison system, how it works is it starts more isolating people. More you start isolating people, it is not going to help them any better. So prisons are supposed to be correction centers. But if you actually see all the procedures that is done, it is not making them become any better person once they come out of serving through their time in the jail. But instead, they come up with, come out more smarter, how to not get caught. But the very intention of correction center is they should change the attitude, they should change their thinking, they should change their approach. That is what's supposed to be the correction that needs to happen. But in the name of correction, there is more of, if it is driven by punishment, it is driven by hurting somebody else in order for, and expecting them to be a better person and more compassionate and loving person after being getting hurt will not work. And that is where we see there is a difference in how a human intellect, how a human awareness approaches a problem compared to an angelic, uh, awareness approaches a situation, right? So angels accept, humans defend, right? So once you start separating, you have to defend. So as you start defending, the forces on the other side also growing, right? It's, it is only, a, it's, only a, it's, it's only the time that we are waiting for, the minute everything comes down, minute the whole pressure starts building up, whoever gets weaker, other person gets collapsed, right? It is like going against something will not solve the problem. So bringing consensus, bringing that healing between both the parties. And then I like this Warren Buffett's uh, approach of doing business, he says, engage in that business, which is always a win-win deal. Don't step into any deal, which is only profitable for you, not for other person, because that relationship will not last longer. And that is his approach in all his uh, investments, right? So anyhow, I'm, I just want to bring some practical aspects of how can you use it? It is not just uh, for being spiritual, but you can bring spirituality in practical aspect, right? So when you accept, angels accept, and then see the goodness <clears throat> in every person and inspire that goodness and then bring them, make them part of the community. So humans think, angels feel. They feel where the other person is coming from. Feelings are more powerful than thinking and they have high EQ and also SQ, emotional quotient and spiritual quotient. 
when we say about emotional quotient compared to IQ intelligence quotient is like you understand with your head if this person do does this I should do this right so whole of the psychology is whole of this this physical world is driven by the intellect right so is driven by the head emotional quotient is like if some person is feeling feeling hurt what is that i should do that will change that feeling to love so there is the intelligence based on the feelings and that is eq eq means if i have to build a, a team and that is why there is a lot of this going on in the corporate world that leaders have to focus more on eq than iq and where the team building actually happens what they are they start observing is who can you don't have to understand everything in the world because everything is kind of ready-made all you have to know is like what you need to do right so i mean when i made that statement i was talking more about uh, innovation in the corporate world innovation in the community innovation means there is this certain problem how do you solve that problem and that is where innovative ideas come innovative ideas takes you to to the innovative solutions right so and and they in most of these trainings innovation trainings they always bring the power of heart so they always see emotions i'll give you some practical tool there is something called uh, um, customer satisfaction and customer loyalty and there is always an emotional component connected to marketing and sales so they always latch on to the emotional part of it but their intention is to sell something for you but but if you actually see the power of heart is is what is needed so now corporates are saying that if i have to survive longer in in this world i have to not just use people's emotions to sell something for them i really have to be concerned about where the other person is coming from right um I work for this company called Sephora and then and one of the things that they put up with all this uh, Black Lives Matter protests and all this stuff they this is the company first company who's who, who pledge that there is a 15% of their um, products come from this black owned businesses so anyhow so the point here is when you start empathizing with the people you're serving the people, not just agenda of making money out of it, right? So if you start using this approach of understanding what people are feeling and how can I uplift the community? How can I make the community more prosperous? Prosperity is not just in the dollar amount, prosperity in the health, not just the physical health, the, the health of the community, how much love there is between the people in the community is the prosperity. And all of these measures comes from EQ. So, and that is where angels are always come from this place of looking at what is the bigger goal of our existence? What is the point of our living? If there is no love, if there's all wealth, but there is no love in your life, what is the point of living? Right. So they always bring the attention of the person who they are serving. They bring their attention back to the heart. Bring their attention back to what is the point of life and then guide them and then uplift them, inspire them and empower them by they themselves giving that love. Right. And then so so there is this uh, Every time you build something, you always have to speculate. And then angels always realize. Realize means they unveil. They unveil the power. And humans always have to um, forecast. Like we have.
have to speculate that if I do this, that, and other, that may happen, right? So whereas angels come from a place of awareness, when I use the word awareness, how is that different from speculating? Say, for example, when you're meditating, you start stepping into this place of peace. And then you don't speculate that, oh, there is some peace inside you. They slowly start stepping into that awareness. And from that awareness, from that experience, they realize what they are. They just don't say that I am peaceful, I'm powerful, all this stuff. They step into that awareness and that leads to realization. Awareness leads to realization. Angels head towards realization, not just speculation, right? And uh, to give one more uh, note, how is meditation different from imagination? There is some people say that fake it till you make it. Angels don't approach that path. Angels approach with clear understanding. Clear understanding meaning um, they know how to approach. In, when you start meditating, you, you may not know that you may experience peace, but you know that what you need to do and then you have to act on it. So here when we meditate, first thing what we start doing is like we want to be aware. And how can you aware of your spiritual presence? We understand that there is this physical aspect and then we start shifting our awareness away from this limited sense of self. The minute you shift from that self-awareness of your truth, from that awareness, you start realizing. And that realization power is coming from the power of experiencing. You yourself are experiencing because you shifted your awareness. When to, to put a few more nuance to that is when you are shifting your awareness, your, your mind is also calm and clear. Your heart is also very, it, it, is, it is free from any of these triggered emotions or no, there is no speculation. So when we are speculating, we start imagining something, we start creating some sense of that feel and then we start working from that speculated sense of feeling and then we start acting from there. Whereas spirituality comes from the place of unveiling. You're not creating some imagination and then you're trying to step into that. Instead, they start unveiling. They realize that they observe. It starts with mindfulness. When you are mindful, when you're observing, you're observing your thoughts, and then you know these are coming from body consciousness. These are coming from limited desire. These are coming from this limited addiction. These are coming from these dependencies. As you start observing, you unveil that, how you gently step away from that. And then you step into the silence. And that silence is nothing but clarity. You bring the clarity to your own sense of self. And as you start stepping into that calm and peaceful place, this sense of self slowly starts unveiling. As it starts unveiling, you, you, you experience for yourself and that is what we call self-realization. And with self-awareness, you are self-aware by being in contact with your pure presence. Realization comes when you experience your own pure presence. Follow it. As we start going into this journey and then there is this transformation that is coming. And so that is, that is the approach of a emotionally healthy soul. Right? So angels reconcile, humans justify. In other words, when, when a, as a humans, we end up sitting in that hurtful emotions, we are not moving away from that emotions. Instead, we start thinking from that place when you start thinking that, why am I feeling like this? And then you start, you, you take it for granted that this is what I am. I am hurt. I am angry. I am upset. You take it for granted. And from that 
place of pain, you start thinking forward, saying that, why am I feeling like this? He did this, she did this, this happened, that happened. This, my mom did this to me, my dad this to me, I was abused, I was accused, I was this. So, but whole work is on why is this happening? Instead, angels go beyond that. This is the result of that, agreed, but what else do I have? So I have to shift to a different place in order to reconcile with my own pain or somebody else have taken advantage of me. At that time, how am I going to reconcile? Am I making a commitment to move forward and do something about it? Or am I going, am I doing something to make this thing uh, permanent, right? Of course, everyone get hurt when we, when we fall away from our uh, spiritual awareness, when we fall into this physical emotions, in this push and pull and rush of these experiences of emotional desires, uh, fighting each other, each one will be hurting another person. And some will be hurted more than others, but eventually everyone get hurt. But if I stay, stay put in that place of pain, only thing that comes from that place is just judgment. And you just justify, why am I feeling this? And then there is no way not to feel this other than this, right? And that is a problem. The whole attitude of an angel is different. Of course, they accept it, there is a pain, I was hurt, I was abused, maybe. I was taken advantage, maybe, but is this what I want to continue? And the whole attitude of, I want to reconcile with my past. I want to reconcile and then I want to move forward. And that attitude needs a lot of courage. And that, that habit of taking things in, into your own hands to take the uh, ownership of the self to transform that hurt is what is there in, in, in emotionally strong people, right? And you can see a lot of uh, powerful leaders who, who came from that place, Nelson Mandela is one. And um, Mother Teresa is also one of those who, who came from that place, right? So just to wrap up, so humans measures, uh, angels donate. Angels come from a place of abundance Humans come from a place of shortage or limitations. So the whole uh, approach of uh, listening is you are not just hearing to what is obvious, but you are going deeper than what is obvious. So the power of love and power of cherishing. So when you love is an expression and when you start, the presence leads to the expression. So angels always cherish the presence of human consciousness. It means um, the eternal presence of a being, they always cherish the opportunity of interacting with the soul, the spirit, the conscious being. Conscious beings are the opportunity of experiencing love. They cherish the company of the person, not just uh, the expression and experience that comes from that. So angels remember, humans learn. Angels go deeper into their consciousness. They unveil, they go into their presence and then they awaken that presence and humans uh, start learning some new techniques, new tools, and things like that. Right? So, before we wrap up, just want to take a pause and then see if we can, uh, if there is any thoughts, questions, and then we can have wrap up with a nice meditation. Yeah. Anyone, any thoughts, comments, questions? Stella, Sangamitra, Jayashree, Michelle.
Yeah, I really like the all the qualities that you have mentioned about uh, angels and and humans, like special and ordinary, extraordinary and ordinary. <laughs> mm. So, but is it practical? Do you find this thing practical? It is quite practical, but it needs a lot of willpower, and willpower only comes through the practice of spirituality. Right, and. it comes with the practice of experience more i start experiencing more you can start exercising and that is where uh, meditation if you um, set your intention when you are heading towards meditation set your intention to experience and then use your heart feel your way into that meditative space not think your way into the into meditation feel your way into that place of meditation more i feel more i experience more i feel the power things slowly starts unveiling for yourself cool thank you thank you anyone else stella michelle okay, okay so let's uh, Yes, Stella. You want to say something? Oh, I just really appreciate everything you shared. Do you see it is actionable? Uh, I see your recording. Is it possible to get the? Sure, Hello? sure, sure. I can send the recording. Yeah. You have my email. I think uh... you can. Uh, Yeah, you can uh, keep it in the chat, and then I will I will send you. Okay, thank you. It's a whole eighteen uh, steps actually. There are eighteen steps to move from humans to angels. Angels are the most powerful ones. So, so let's uh, take few minutes to step into that place. Pure presence. make yourself very comfortable fully relax and prepare yourself for the next few minutes slow down slow down anything that you are doing slow down your breath slow down your thoughts slow down your emotions slow down starting with your breath and your body make your breath deep and long be very mindful of every breath that you are taking try to feel every breath that is flowing into your body feel that wave of soothing oxygen flowing into your body and more you relax your body more you allow this healing energy to reach all corners of your body each breath relax and let this energy flow let it reach every corner of your body
and now be very mindful of this soothing energy this calming experience reaching every corner be very detached and be very loving to your body like a mother feeding a child you the living being a conscious being a loving being feeding the body your child the creation of the soul feed your body with this healing energy be very kind be very aware that this body has gone through a lot of wear and tear with lots of love lots of understanding consciously give your body this healing energy feel your body responding to each breath and let this calming energy naturally seep into your temples as you consciously relax every muscle in your forehead in your jaws your cheeks feel this calmness let this calming energy surface on your face each breath the sense of loving lightness radiating from your face each breath let every muscle feel and each breath let this fountain of soothing energy flow into your brain the soothing oxygen this healing energy reaching top of your scalp let this calming energy spread all over your scalp Let all the stress dissolve. Make one breath at a time. Experience the transformation. Each breath, feel that calmness flowing into your brain. Observe the subtle movements in your brain. feed your brain with this much needed oxygen observe the subtle movements let it move let it flow be very kind and now consciously clear your mind of any thoughts the next few minutes prepare your mind to rest in this peaceful stillness observe your mind be very graceful and let any thoughts that is occupying your mind to naturally dissolve 
dissolve into the silence. Focus on the energy of your mind. Let your mind be very still, very calm, very peaceful. Focus on that sense of lightness. Allow that peaceful stillness to naturally fill your mind. Take your mind into stillness, into that peaceful stillness. Let your mind rest. And just allow your mind to recover. Let your mind heal. Make this conscious contact with this peace that inner stillness. Let that sense of peace slowly seep into your heart. Gracefully slipping into that loving lightness. Each breath, inhaling peace, Relaxing into that stillness. Take your heart into that place of comfort. Take your heart into that loving silence into that loving space which is beyond this worldly emotions. As you gracefully make space in your heart, and allow that pure inner presence that pure innocence of a child. Let the heart of a child reveal in the silence of your heart. Feel your way into the heart of an inner child very pure, very sacred. Give yourself permission, give your heart permission to step into that sacred silence, a very pure innocence, as if you're returning to the loved father, a loving mother, going beyond the physical awareness, connecting your heart to that supreme mother, to that being of love. Go beyond the physical awareness. Step into your spiritual presence. Step into the arms of this eternal loving mother. Try to experience that unconditional love of the Supreme Being. 
the love that heals the love that reveals your true power the love of an angel step into the arms of an angel let your inner angel awaken let your pure innocence that inner child emerge feel your way into your angelic presence raise your awareness and make yourself very comfortable in this loving lightness feeling very light let your heart taste that pure love the love which is non judgmental the love which is unconditional pure healing love stay absorbed in your loving presence love light and stillness may your heart be full of love stay absorbed in the heart of this divine mother stay absorbed in this womb of love in this womb of loving mother let your heart stay connected to the heart of the mother every heart beat of this supreme soul the supreme mother is pulsing in your heart every heartbeat is charged with this divine love keep your heart connected to that supreme mother stay absorbed in that divine love like a child in the womb of a mother stay absorbed in the womb of the supreme mother feeling very safe surrounded by love and light deeply nourishing your heart with the supreme love the supreme lightness keep raising your vibrations keep tuning into your pure presence stay inspired stay absorbed in love
go into this loving stillness step into this nirvana the land beyond space and time step into this awareness of shanti dam pure peace the land beyond earthly emotions and limitations raise into your power raise into your angelic presence strengthen your heart the heart of love empower with this love light and connected stillness love light and deep connected stillness you are free from that body of emotions fully absorbed in your angelic body of light your heart is fully absorbed in love your presence is deeply aware of your spiritual presence of light love light and stillness awakening the angel within awakening the smriti the awareness transforming your presence the stiti your whole vritti of la love transforming the vatavaran the atmosphere Let this wave of shanti expand a deep sense of contentment radiating this waves of shanti peace into your body into your world into all the people you are in contact with let this love sneh sayog seva let this attitude of love let this connection of love let this seva of uplifting the souls happen with your angelic presence om shanti 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 recognize the feel in with conscious attention nourish yourself with this pure feeling with your pure presence hold this stillness hold this lightness feel that aura around your body 
and allow this presence to carry into your sleep. Try to maintain the silence for the rest of the evening. Try to hold your loving angelic presence in this silence and sleep into this loving lightness. Let this angelic energy work on your subconscious mind. Let this pure feeling flow into your dreams, healing your subconscious mind. Focus on that subtle loving light and try to sleep into that loving light. Sleep into this world of loving light. In the company of the Divine Mother, in the safety and canopy of love. Let the healing begin. Let your heart start empowering. Om Shanti, Shanti.